Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TracksideScenery.com. Can I help you? Here's show people how to grow weed. No, a how-to video on model railroad weeds. Bummer, man. Maybe I should have asked him to hang around. I could have used his hair for weeds. Okay, there's a lot of different types of scenery modeling we can do. I call this type living scenery because we're modeling things that live in the real world. Tree foliage, bushes, vines, grasses, and weeds. There's also a lot of things you can do to make your modeling believable and realistic. Some of them are commercially available and some of them you can make yourself. Today though, I'm going to use a combination of commercially available products and things we can make with materials we find around the house. So let's go take a look and see if we can find something. So if you don't want to end up in the doghouse like Joey does all the time, I suggest that your budget supplies be something you're allowed to use. Like this wig that I bought for Joey at a yard sale for 50 cents. We used it on the spruce coal and timber layout. Ah, uh, isn't she sweet? Now seriously folks, I'm not going to make you watch me cut that wig up on video. You can figure that out for yourself. You're going to see some commercially available products in a minute and you're going to see the proportions that they come in. Just take that wig and cut it into those links. This all works the same way, whether it's a wig or whether it's a commercial product. First item I have here is Woodland Scenic's Light Green Field Grass. They're longer strands that I cut down into manageable sizes to use with the other grass. Now I'm working in O scale on this project, so I'm using the NOC 12 millimeter grasses. This is the adhesive that I use and I can't stress enough to read the manufacturer's instructions and ventilate your work area. You'll need your dirt or ground cover to fill in as a mask and you'll see what I mean in just a few minutes. And remember all those old bowls and trays you were going to throw away? Well here's where they come into good use. And finally we're at the first step, the preparation process. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to grab your weeds, you're going to get a handful and you're going to roll it up like a cigar, but you're not going to smoke it. Okay, as you see, this is just an example at this point. I'm not ready to put it on the layout. I don't even have the glue down, but I want to show you how we roll it up like a cigar, like the old Play-Doh stuff. Break it in half and dab it very lightly. That's what we're going to be doing in the glue. As you can see, I have the light green on the left, the dark green on the right. They're ready to go. I'm going to put them on a table right next to me. Now, again, I can't stress enough. Read the manufacturer's instructions. Ventilate your work area. Since we're creating patches of weeds here, I don't really have a plan of where I'm going to spray exactly. So I'll just start off with some heavy random strokes and see what I come up with. And as you'll see, you shouldn't worry about it because if you don't like it, you can cover it back up with dirt and start over again. Ah, the moment we've been waiting for, actually applying the weeds to your layout. I didn't show the clock ticking away there, but after I applied the glue, I waited 15 minutes for it to get nice and tacky. Now just like we saw in the preparation step, we're going to roll, pull it apart, and dab. And do the same thing over and over again with different colors until you get patterns that you like. In this next step, I'm actually going to backfill with the dirt. You see those areas of glue that we didn't put the weeds on? That's glue. And if we don't put dirt on it, you know what it's going to look like? It's going to look like you thought I was going to say glue, didn't you? I make sure I sprinkle enough dirt on there so it covers up all the areas where the glue could be exposed. You'll know if you don't cover it up right because you'll get little shiny spots. You want to make sure you get that covered up. I let everything settle and after a couple hours I go back with a barbecue skewer and I start combing or tussling to try to get some of the dirt out of the weed stalks. At this point you'll probably see some areas that didn't quite get covered up with the dirt and it'll have a shiny look to it. That's no problem because what you're going to do is you're going to sprinkle dirt back on there and you're going to spray hairspray around it. You're going to soak it in a little bit. It'll keep the fresh dirt over top of it. After I comb it and tease it, I go over it lightly with a shop vac to get any loose dirt up. After I'm done with the large patches of weeds, I go back in and I do some smaller patches with different colors like you see here. There's a lot of methods out there for working with weeds and grasses, whether it's commercial products or homemade. It's always fun to try new methods and experiment and see which one works best for you. This is Joey Ricard with TracksideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.